When I posted this pencil case, a lot of people were asking how I was going to plan to seal it or varnish it. So I decided to try this folk art satin varnish. I saw it in the paint section at the craft store. I was going to use Mod Podge, which is in the glue section. And I think this is kind of geared more toward acrylic paint art. So I've never used polyurethane before. This is a new experience for me. There is definitely a smell to this, but it is, as it says, non-toxic. It is a thinner consistency and it does dry clear, durable, non-yellowing, flexible, and it takes 72 hours to cure, which is shorter than Mod Podge. I think that's about 28 days to cure. When I started this first coat, the paint started coming up a little as I brushed it on. I don't know why the paint was coming up. I didn't seal the original surface of this box before I painted and I think that might have helped if I did or sanded it or something. I was able to pick up some of the paint layers with a Q-tip and this is self-leveling so you don't need to worry about if you have a bunch of brush strokes on it which is nice. Because it is a thinner formula it will drip so I think every side I coat I will just keep horizontal to dry that way. If I have different type of objects in the future, I might end up using the spray varnish that they have. I think it comes in matte and glossy. That way you don't even have to touch the surface, you could just spray it on. And the reason I like that versus like a can of spray is the non-toxic element. I'm really trying to gear more toward the varnishes that are not so smelly, not so chemically this does dry quickly, but again, I'm in a really dry climate, so everything dries quickly here. Three coats are recommended for outdoor use. Uh, since this is like a pencil box that's going to be handled a lot, I want that uh, sealed secureness, so I'm going to put three coats. Now we wait 72 hours, three days. While we wait, I want to mention I did print that design on two 5x7 postcards for my monthly mail patrons. These will be available until the end of September this month. So if you want these in the mail, go check out my monthly mail tier on Patreon. It helps support me and my channel. So thank you, link down below. I don't know if it picks up on camera, but the varnish definitely made the colors of the paint more vibrant. It doesn't feel sticky or tacky at all. It doesn't smell. There is a texture to this case already, so that shows up, but I can only see mostly the paint strokes from the paint underneath the varnish. I think because this type of varnish dries flexible, it's nice uh, for the hinge of this. I think this might have been from like the first or second coat where the varnish is kind of coming off. That might have been because I opened this while it was wet. In the future, I know now to just leave it after like the first coat. Don't touch it, don't move it, and don't try to fix any brush strokes, just leave it. And then the second and third coat can be a little bit more brushy or less delicate. Someone left a comment that it's possible this type of varnish is more scratch resistant. I'm really nervous to test this, but my curiosity has to. Okay, maybe don't scratch with scissors, but even so, like, not too bad. Another project I want to try, which involves sealing something, is this terrazzo sealer and flakes. 
It's terrazzo, right? That's how you say terrazzo. Because I've seen people say terrazzo, but pizza has two Zs and it's said with a t sound. I have seen some videos where people make their own terrazzo flakes and that's definitely an option. But in case you don't have the time to do that, I could see this being a good option. I did make a few samples of the different flake colors to try, maybe putting them next to paint, but in the end, I decided to go with just the flakes. The sealer comes in a matte and gloss finish. I'm using the matte, and it is a two-in-one, so it glues the flakes and it seals them. On more porous surfaces, you do want to use more, and I worked in small sections because it does dry quickly. I'm using my finger to move around the flakes the way I want, but you can of course use something else. I found you get more variety in the shapes of flakes if you shake the bottle. A lot of the smaller pieces are at the bottom. And you can also break the flakes with your fingers if you want smaller shapes. I think the more variety of shapes makes it more of a realistic terrazzo. I think this would be a good option to use in a project that had scratches or imperfections because you can easily cover them with terrazzo flakes. It's really easy to go overboard with these flakes, so I think in this case, less is more. I think having space around the flakes is what gives it a more terrazzo look, but you can make it however you want. Go overboard if you want to. I let all sides dry for an hour and then returned with the top coat. And I ended up putting two top coats on this because some of the edges of the flakes were sticking out too much for me, but it's really up to you how many coats you want to do. And this also takes 72 hours to fully cure. It's not going to be exactly like realistic terrazzo, and there will be a texture to the surface of whatever you put this on, but I still really like the look of it, whether it's terrazzo or a speckled look. I'm also curious what this would look like paired with different paint or textures or on different surfaces. I got some comments about my cutting board palette and I am definitely not glued to this. I'm not in love with it. And it's really not a great option for paint. It was just something I already had around. Paint dries quickly on it. It's really hard to get it off because the cutting board is textured, but I do like this like board style. I like that there's a hole in it to hang on my pegboard, but also I really like ceramic. These dishes have been with me for years, still held up. I got them from Target many years ago. They're just like sauce dishes and I use them for everything. These have made me really love ceramic type of palettes. So then I kind of went on a rabbit hole journey of <laughs> looking at ceramic palettes. Because I got those at Target, I got another plate at Target. So I'm going to start using this with my acrylic paints. It's a simple stoneware dinner salad plate. I think it's a salad plate. This is gray, which could be good for white paint. Gray or white works great. The paint washes off of it really easily. Like the handmade quality of it, it's wonky, it's not perfect. I'll link this by the way, but this has sprung kind of an obsession for me that I want to share with you guys. Come with me to my laptop. If you go to my Etsy shop and go to my profile, I have all my favorite items in collections. You're welcome to browse these if you ever want ideas for gifts or whatnot. So I have made a ceramic paint palettes collection of some of my favorites. 
As I mentioned, I like the cutting board kind of shape, which is more of a slab. So I found some slab shapes that I really liked. I definitely like the handmade wonky as well as some of the refined shapes. There's so many different shapes to explore through different shops. And if some of them are too expensive, I found that searching for trays or cheese platters also bring up good ceramic shapes. I really like this one because of the hole to hang on my pegboard. I just like the overall look of it. Even something like a soap dish could work. Things that are used for kitchen or bathrooms can work. As soon as it becomes a paint palette, it does go up in price. And some of them come with water cups, which is another thing I'm looking at. Some of them have pads on the bottom for your tabletop. And some of these might be sold out by the time you look at my collection board, so definitely check out the shop name to see what, uh, what the latest stuff they have in stock is. I also liked this ceramic palette slab. It's very clean. This one, I really like the idea of holding a palette because I do a lot of touch-ups on my projects that just need like one to two colors of paint to have something like this in my hand while I paint with the right hand. Got into like the different shapes and just really liking the whole artistry behind the ceramic palettes. I think this shop makes such adorable figurine type palettes. I saw that this shop also makes custom palettes of your animal. It can be a guinea pig, it could be a rabbit, a cat, a dog, whatever your pet is. This shop will customize it on the palette and I just could not get over wanting a palette with my dog Kona on it. Some other shops I wanted to share. This one came up in a lot of YouTube videos, Sylvan Clayworks. This shop makes a lot of unique palette and painting supplies. It is on the more expensive side, but again, it's supporting an artist. Someone is making all of these by hand as their profession. I totally understand that. I am learning that these ceramic palettes are more of an investment, so you're not going to get rid of these or, you know, toss them like you maybe would a plastic palette. These are an investment and will most likely stay with you for your whole art journey. Another popular shop is Sugar House Ceramic Co. Seen them a lot on Instagram. I really like their speckled mixing stone, which is again like a flat slab type of palette. I do like this wiggle paint palette. The waves seem like such a nice hold in your hand. Another type of slab shape. I did find some on Amazon, which I added to my Amazon favorites list. Like again, you can search for kitchen or bathroom items and it's a little bit more on the affordable side. A baking tray might be thicker, but it is a good size and a good shape for a palette. And I can definitely see these notches being a good place for the brushes. I'm not entirely sure if these are similar quality to a handmade one, but sometimes you can find handmade shops listed on Amazon. I don't think as many people know that. If I ever did try ceramics, I would definitely want to try to make my own palette because all of this has just made me appreciate the whole artistry of it. <laughs> 